Marhaba friends, Windows 11 on your Intel based Mac using open source QEMU and Apple's hypervisor framework which is an accelerator. Yes, sounds exciting. Let's get started. <laughs> I assume you have an Intel based Mac and you have installed QEMU correctly on your Mac using Homebrew. QEMU by default has SM bias but we are going to install Windows 10 using UEI, UEFI firmware for x86 64 virtual machines. Therefore, we are going to download it as a separate package from the Fedora website. As you can see, it is the official build and the package name is EDK2 OVMF. And if you read, it says it's a project to enable UEFI support for virtual machines. This package contains sample 64-bit UEFI for QEMU KVM. Okay, so this is the place where we can get it. So if I select this link, if we select this link and right click and open the address in a new tab, then it will ask me whether if I want to download it and click, I'll click on allow, which will download the bits. Now, after the bits are downloaded, I'm going to switch over to my terminal and where the majority of the work is. All right. Okay. So in my terminal, I'm going to check whether the bits are being downloaded. And yes, it's there. All right. Now, since it's an RPM, we will not be able to use it directly. To unpack this RPM, we need to install another package, which is brew install RPM. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> very imaginatively and once this completes Then we are going to issue a command which will unpack the RPM into a folder of our use so we'll say RPM to CPIO and We'll say less than sign space The name of the package we downloaded EDK2 and I hit tab and then the pipe symbol CPIO Dash ID. I mean I got it from the internet. Okay, so now we have a folder called USR which should contain our OVMF firmware. See, OVMF UEFI firmware. So if we see the contents of that folder, we have OVMF code, FD, OVMF secure boot, OVMF VAS and VAS secure boot. So we can also use secure boot if we want to, but I'm not going to use secure boot. And this will also turn up in some, an upcoming video very, very shortly. So, um, I just checked QMU firmware. So right now what do we have? We have the UEFI firmware that we will use to install Win. First up, I'm going to check the current working directory I'm on. So I'm the present working directory. I'm in my home directory. I'm going to change into QMU and I'm going to make a separate directory for my Windows 11. No, wind, okay, not in all caps. I'm going to make it Windows 11. And I'm going to go slow because I am bad with the command line so please guys bear with me okay I changed into the directory and as you can see it's empty so I'm going to copy the vert IO windows drivers which I have from my windows 10 installation here and I'm going to move the latest windows 11 bits which is for the x86 architecture not the arm with not the uh, not the arm architecture uh, here okay all right I wish I can speak today and I'm going to say QMU make me a hard disk. So I'm saying QMU image create in the format QCOW2. Very imaginatively, I'm going to name it Windows 11.QCOW2. And the size that I'm going to give it is 35 gigs. Assign 80 gigs if you have that much space. Okay, I mean, all right. So I'm going to create a file by saying touching a file, going to say start dash windows 11 dot sh and we are going to write into this file using nano all right all right guys full attention i mean don't even blink and don't even think about getting late <laughs> all right qmu i'm going to say qmu system and the architecture we are going to use is x86 64 i please make me a machine with the following components number one please make sure that it has four gigs of ram and I have eight, so I've given four. If you have 16, please give eight. Okay, make sure it has a display which is of type vert IO. So the vert IO will drive the display, vert IO drivers. And the display is going to be default. And by default, it has a cursor. So I'm going to turn that cursor off. And I'm going to say show cursor off. And I'm going to turn off OpenGL2. 
make sure this is turned off guys otherwise it, you'll have bad performance okay next up make sure the machine has a usb and the device that is you're going to be plugged into that usb port is going to be a usb tablet okay so usb tablet and and then give a space and next backslash next line next up you're going to say make sure i'm allocating two cores out of my four cores and but i gave it four okay this is voiceover okay and the, the hard disk that I want to install the Windows 11 in is in the file called Windows 11. You know why guys, I have four cores and I allocated four and it worked. I mean, this is the magic of QMU, but okay. So Windows 10, I gave two cores, Windows 11, I gave four cores and the performance was better. Okay. And the interface IF is the interface and that is of going to be Vert.io. So we are going to use the Vert.io drivers to write into the Windows 11.qcow25. Oh, next up, we are going to say machine. The machine type is going to be Q35. That is the latest machine that QMU supports as of now. And the accelerator for that machine is going to be Apple's hypervisor framework, HVF. All right. Next up, we need an ISO file, right? So we have must have a CD-ROM in our machine. And I'm going to copy the file name from the other terminal says ls what is the file name so this is the file name let me copy from here and paste it there you see how slow i'm going guys because i'm slow on the command line please bear with me i mean if the guys were like faster they can go faster okay and i did not have to give a full path because it's in the same directory where the script resides okay Next up, we have the vert IO drivers for vert IO of ISO, right? So the way to add a second CD-ROM to the machine that I found was this. I have to say drive file is, is the vert IO win drivers. And the format is going to be raw. And it's going to be read only. Oh, sorry. It's going to be media is going to be CD-ROM. And it's going to be read only. And if you have a different way to add a second CD-ROM from a script in QMU, please hit me up in the comments and I can improve the script. Okay, improve the script, guys. I mean, this is what internet is for. I mean, this is what we are here for. Okay, so network interface card is going to be user mode driver, user mode, and the drivers is going to be Vert.io again. That is, the model is going to be Vert.io. That means the driver is going to be Vert.io. Again, this is going to be the clock for the machine. The Base it on the local time of your host machine so use the local time and the clock is going to be the host machine clock that is your max mac clock okay now cpu is going to be of type nihal m i mean this is again tons of research guys trust me tons of research i mean if anything else other than nihal m works like base or max or host or or whatever else i mean i mean hit me up in the comments and and give me proof i mean i don't know how can you can give me proof but if it works, uh, because it will have better performance, I guess. Because I have like a 2011 Mac Book Pro that I'm showing you, like more than a decade old. But anyways, we, that is what we are here for. We are going to do the best that we can. Okay, next up is we are going to load up the Q, uh, we're going to load up the UEFI firmware from the pad that we have downloaded it and unzipped it, remember? That is in our downloads directory. So the so interface is going to be P flash, format is going to be raw, and read only is going to be on. And the file path, I have to give it the I have to give it the complete file path because I in the files, the UEFI files are shared between Windows 10 and Windows 11, and I did not want to duplicate it. That's all. That is why I have given it. If you put it somewhere else, please use that part. So inside USR, there's a folder called share. Inside share is there's OBMF and we have OBMF code.fd, not capital F, small f and d. Okay, backslash. Next up, again, that same I'm going to say have a drive where it says interface is going to be P flash and format is again going to be raw. So we are going to copy, probably we could. Format is going to be raw, read only is going to be on. Oh no, we did not have read only. File file is going to be again, this has to be the complete path. Users, my yeah, my home folder name, Hikmadustad, 
downloads it hikmat is going to change to your username if you decide to keep it in your downloads folder okay so underscore usr uh, sorry, and, and under usr there's a share and under share is ovmf and under ovmf there's ovmf vars dot ft all right that's it and once we have one we need to say boot from the first cd uh, cd rom which is boot which is the windows 11 iso 5 now i'm going to get out of here by hitting control x and I'm going to get rid of Satan and invoke the blessings of Almighty Allah by saying, Rahim." Change the permission to make it executable by saying chmod plus x. And I'm going to say, Rahim." Okay, what do we say, guys? Lift off. We have a lift off. Yes, it's loading. And I'm going to hit escape, escape, escape to go into the UEFI firmware too. So that you guys can see better and I can see better. And both of us are going to be better. So 640 by 480 is very small. Choose the resolution that your monitor relatively supports. All right, guys, we have one more thing to do. Remember, guys, this is Windows 11. So we have to fix TPM and we have to fix secure boot issues, right? It is on this screen. Hit Shift F10 to bring up the command prompt. And once it comes up, type in regedit to open the registry editor. And again, I found this fix on the internet. It's widely available. I, this is nothing ingenious about me or what I have done. Okay, so browse to hotkey local machine. And if you cannot use your mouse, you can also use your keyboard to come down. As you can see, I'm using my keyboard to show you guys that I'm using my keyboard. Then go to system and then go down to setup. And once you are in setup, expand it and Go, click on edit and then new key d, d word which says new key which says lab config inside live config select a new d word and then name that need d word bypass tpm check how imaginative yeah really okay we need a one more d word which says by bypass secure boot Secure boot check. How imaginative again. Very good. All right. Now we're going to change the value from 0 to 1. So double click on those two keys and change the value from 0 to 1. So it's going to bypass the check. And this is the way you install it on Linux also, which I have shown earlier. I mean, like three months before. Okay. So get out of it and now we should be good to go. I mean, this will not complain that we don't have TPM and secure boot. See, you're right. So again, from disclaimer, again, a disclaimer guy, from this point of time, I'm going to speed up the video only to focus on the bits that we get stuck on. <laughs> again, your mileage will vary because you may have a better machine and I don't have a fed up this video to, to different levels of speed okay i don't know how to. so on the screen we'll say custom install in advanced and we'll say okay you see we don't have a driver we don't have any drives okay so why we have we have to load a driver so let's click on load a driver and click on okay for it to automatically load the drivers if everything is going good yes 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 we see there win 10 w10 select windows 10 again why because it's a cousin of windows 11 okay so now that we have installed the driver what are your drivers for the drive our disk has been detected but we are installed going to load one more driver which is the net kvm driver which is the driver that our uh, network card is going to use so that you have instant if you have internet while we are installing a windows 11 so browse down and go to the net kvm folder not pv panic up net kvm and inside that go to the windows 10 you see how i'm using the keyboard guys just to show you i mean i could use the mouse but i'm using the keyboard okay but amd amd64 and hit on okay and that's it red hat word io ethernet adapter so we have loaded our word io drivers for our uh, qcout disk and our ethernet driver so we'll have internet okay looks good guys click on next and then i'm going to again we are going to stop at places where things went a little sideways otherwise you must have done this like i don't know umpteenth time how they say okay 
So yes, so this is the country origin and see, as you see, we already have full screen, almost. Again, something went wrong, don't jump out of your window guys. Okay, I'm here to help. Hit on Shift F10 and this will bring up the command prompt and enter these commands one by one on your command prompt. Say so net user administrator, make it active. Net user add your username and password. So I gave Hikmat Yostad, H-E-U and password one, two, three. Net local group administrator, add, add H-E-U or username to the local group administrators and change into the Windows directory and sing system32 OOBE and say msobe.exe. Again, this is a very well-known fix. There's nothing that I have done. What this is supposed to do is supposed to restart your installation. I couldn't get it restart, so I just hit Control C from a command line, change the script to remove the Windows 11 ISO that because we have already installed there and change it, remove it comment out the boot line because we are not booting from the CD-ROM anyway, anyway, anyways. So comment out that line, otherwise it looks good. Okay, now we are going to boot from a hard disk and it says username password is incorrect. Don't jump out the window guys, please watch this video. Click on OK and we should be good to go. All right, we should be good. Okay, that's it. Okay, now choose the privacy settings for your device. Okay, do things that suits you best. And yes, we are on Windows 11, guys. See, we are on Windows 11. See, display adapter, we are going to fix that. Don't worry, how? We are going to, and we have Intel Core i7 Nihal M Core Class i7. See, we are just going to load up the drivers from our Vertio drive. So I'm going to use the command prompt. So we're going to say D colon backslash, and I'm going to hit the down arrow to find the 64-bit MSI drivers, okay. Again, your mileage will vary. Now, <laughs> people say your mileage may vary. I'm going to say your mileage will vary because you will have probably a better machine, a different machine that I have, which gives you better performance. I have sped up this machine to varying degrees of, okay, how to say in um, video terms, sparing varying degrees of speed to show you guys what goes on. And then we in click on install. And once we install this Vert.io Win driver, we are going to install the uh, the guest tools. After that, which we will we will have to we remove. You see, it already blinked, and we have better uh, better display. Okay, since again, I have um, this is like a more than a decade old uh, Mac. I am going to use a smaller resolution so I could see the task uh, the taskbar at the bottom. Otherwise, I couldn't see it. If you guys have a like a 4K monitor, choose the appropriate resolution. I mean, it looks superb. I mean, I just imagine because I don't have a monitor it's like the 4K monitor, so it will look. I mean, it, it's almost like native. I mean, Apple HVF. I mean, is is pretty good. I mean, trust me. I mean, I mean, I used QMU with KVM on Linux, and I was really happy. But I wanted to make this video about in in Mac and. It looks good to me. I mean, it's almost native. So thank you guys so much for your time. Take care and stay tuned for more interesting videos like this. Bye-bye.